In the right conditions, even the smallest spark can trigger a blaze. So, there's one alternative to spontaneous human combustion. But compared with what else is out there, static power is tame. There's another, even more frightening form of electricity you could be hit by. It's lightning, but with a fiery twist. In 2001, plastic surgeon Gennaro Salvaggi was called to a Belgian hospital to treat victims of a mysterious burns case. When I went to the burn unit, I interviewed the victims, the daughter, the father. I found out that it was a very mysterious case of lightning. It was a terrible storming uh, uh, with lightnings everywhere. It was a real uh, thunderstorm. From the fireplace, a fireball came out. The father was pushed out of the fireplace. He lost consciousness completely. And then this fireball turned 90 degrees it, uh, the daughter who was just uh, playing on the table and then went to the back door. Luckily, the child made a complete recovery. But could this bad weather phenomenon have come within a whisker of claiming another victim of so-called spontaneous human combustion? Unlike normal lightning, ball lightning isn't over in a flash. It's a byproduct of electrical storms that remains active long after the storm has passed. It's an incredibly rare event, never before captured on camera. But I feel we're about to capture it here today, in this microwave oven. Dr David Smith from Northumbria University reckons this little spike will attract enough microwaves to create a ball of pure plasma and bring me face to face with the ball lightning phenomenon. Experimenting with microwaves is highly dangerous, but these are controlled conditions and Dr Smith knows exactly what he's doing. Don't do this at home, folks. Shut the door. Off we go. Cool, oh, look at that. Wow, what's going on there? Well, the steel is acting as the, the focus for the electrons. The electrons are coming off them. They're absorbing the power from the microwaves, and then when they recombine, that power is given off as heat. How, how hot is that? It's hot enough to melt the tip of the steel. The electron temperature would be a few thousand degrees. So how, how does this relate to ball lightning, as it were, in, in the wild? OK, well, what you have around the tip is, is, is plasma, so it's very similar to that. But in ball lightning, it's free to move around. This is making a lot of smoke. Is it likely to explode? <laughs> it may do. <laughs> <laughs> Having seen another potential source of spontaneous ignition, it was time to take a step back and let nature run its course. Coming up, having found two possible sources of ignition, I need to find out what fans the flames of spontaneous combustion. I get landed with a bumper gas bill. Find out what happens when good farts go bad. Whoa. Now, would you like that happening in your underpants? I don't think so, no. I'm on a journey inside spontaneous human combustion, trying to disprove the controversial theory that claims a mysterious force can cause humans to catch fire and all but vanish in a pile of ash. So far, I've found two possible spark sources that could explain the fire's origin. But that's only part of the mystery. When Barry Sudain's charred remains were found, investigators couldn't explain how the fire had managed to ignite and destroy his body. Firstly, whilst it's very easy to scorch a human body, or in this case, a joint of pork, it's very hard to actually set fire to it. The human body is at least 60% water, hardly the most combustible of material. If setting fire to flesh 
is difficult, then keeping it going is even harder. How is it possible that an ordinary house fire could have burnt Barry so severely? With no fire accelerant found outside of his body, could the destructive burns have been fueled by a substance from within him? During digestion, mammals produce three flammable gases. Could one of these fuels explain the victim's continued burning in so-called spontaneous human combustions? So, in my search for the suspect flame accelerant, rather than pointing the finger, it might be a case of uh, pulling it. Whew. Dog did it. Legend has it that an Australian farmer once decided to test the purity of his cow's methane output with disastrous explosive consequences. Could it be that the same fate might befall human beings, only this time without the Australian to light the match? To find out if a gas could be the phantom fuel behind spontaneous human combustions, first of all, I need to see what happens when methane goes bang. I don't know about you, but I haven't got a gas testing plant at home, so I've come here to Cumbria to the Advantica test facility to get some answers. Much of what goes on here is top secret. Military testing, fire and chemical explosions for big corporations. They won't even tell me what's going on behind me. Well, they could, but if they did, they'd have to kill me. The ringing in my ears told me I'd found the perfect place to see the effect of a methane explosion. Does methane, if we try to set light to methane on its own, would it go bang? Methane's flammable when mixed with air between about 5% and 15% in air. Right. If you have too much methane, more than 15%, you can't ignite it. To get the right mix and our blast, we're going to need over 9,000 litres of methane and one tiny little spark. But because even small sparks can make big bangs, I'm planning on being a safe distance back. So to gauge the effects of a methane blast on an organic object, I've left something behind. Do you ever get the feeling that you might have left the gas on? <laughs> I think it's safe to say that when methane goes, it goes with a bang. Wow. Imagine that happening inside your tummy. <coughs> Be quite unmentionable, wouldn't it? Especially after dinner. Hello, dear. I think I'm just about to let one rip. Boom! Boom! Good night, Vienna. I say, the power of methane. The footage from our super high-speed camera confirms it. That was one hell of a blast. You can even see the shockwave that knocked me backwards ripple along the ground. But what about our item of fruit? How did its flesh survive the blast? As you can see, it's a, it's a melon of two halves, Ron. Uh, or it is now. Uh, but very little burning. And there's a tiny, tiny bit there. It might have just been singed a little bit. But that's quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. So, no burns on our melon. But that doesn't mean we can rule methane out as our fuel source. Because when gas burns slowly, it has caused humans major damage, as Robert Francis Bailey discovered. Back in 1967, homeless Bailey planned to spend the night of September the 13th holed up in a derelict building. He didn't know it, but he wouldn't live to see the night out. Fire officer Jack Stacy discovered Bailey's body. My theory, and I can't prove it, is the fact that somehow or other he had drunk something which had chemically mixed with the contents of his stomach and formed a gas which expanded in his stomach and eventually it blew out. <laughs> 